a bullet is fired from a gun and a second bullet is just dropped at the same time the first bullet is fired and this is this is purely fired horizontally the question is to figure out which bullet will hit the ground first will it be will it be this one or will it be this one this is a question that we will answer in this video but before we do that we will jump into analyzing projectile motion we will try to understand how to solve any projectile motion problem mathematically and as we do that we will come across some new words such as such as range we will try to understand what range is we will also we will also drive a formula for maximum height in a projectile motion and also the time the time it takes for the object to complete its motion so we will talk about all of this also how to solve projectile motions problem and then finally come back to this question and answer it all right let's begin so let's stick to the same object the bullet over here um, so now projectile motion we know we know that the velocity it can be resolved into two components there is a vertical component there is a horizontal component and it looks like this the vertical component of the velocity it keeps on decreasing becomes zero at the topmost point then keeps on increasing as it goes down and the horizontal component stays the same nothing happens to it that is because there is an acceleration due to gravity that is acting in the downwards direction so that is only changing the vertical component of the velocity and there is no acceleration in the x direction the horizontal direction so nothing happens to the velocity in the horizontal direction now one way to talk about projectile motion in all its detail is that is it's to really treat x and y separately the horizontal motion and the vertical motion treat them separately so if we say that the bullet was fired with a velocity of u at an angle of theta we can resolve this into components the horizontal component this would be u cos theta the component adjacent to theta is always cos and the component opposite to it opposite to theta is the sine component so this is the initial vertical velocity that is u sine theta so what all do we know in x we know that there is no acceleration so ax is zero the initial the velocity in the x direction that remains the same throughout so ux ux that is really just u cos theta and that's it we don't know anything else for the y for the y direction we know the vertical component that is the initial vertical component and also the acceleration that is involved in the motion so ay ay this is really minus g if we take the upward direction as positive this g is acting downwards so that will be negative and we know uy that is the initial vertical component of the velocity this is u sin theta so now what we will do is we will write the kinematic equation just so that we can refer to them uh, so i'm i'm going to write them over here we have v this is equals to u plus at this is 1 one more is v square this is equals to u square plus 2 a s and finally s this is equals to u t plus half a t square so now if we first start to think about time if we start to think about time the time that the bullet takes to complete its path time for the entire projectile motion we can then ask ourselves which component really is having some influence or determining time so if you try to imagine these two motions separately the vertical motion is identical to a motion for instance let's say you threw a stone vertically with this velocity of u sin theta and the horizontal component is identical to the motion of a particle or anything that is moving horizontally but when you combine these two you get you get a projectile you get you get velocity at a certain angle so the time that the bullet stays in the air that's really just dependent upon the vertical component if this component was longer then the bullet would go to a greater height and take more time to fall to the ground but if u sin theta was shorter then the bullet will not even reach to this height and fall to the ground much sooner but if there was no u sin theta then there would have been just horizontal motion there would have there wouldn't have been any projectile even to work with so the time is really just dependent on the vertical motion it's not at all dependent on horizontal because the time that the bullet stays in the air is really just determined by u sin theta u cos theta plays no role in that so if we try to figure out the time of the journey we only look at the y the y direction so and here we can see that when the bullet falls back to the ground there is no vertical displacement it's there at the same level that it began with there is no vertical displacement so if we try to think about which equation can we use for time let's try to understand what all do we really know we know that the vertical displacement to figure out time to figure out time we know that the vertical displacement 
this is this is zero there is no vertical displacement because it's starting from this point then it's ending at this point there is no vertical displacement there was a positive then equal negative and what else do we know we know the initial vertical velocity u sine theta this is u sine theta and we also know the acceleration that is minus g so so if you look at this third equation we know s and we know this part ut and we also know a only one variable remains that is t so we can use this so when we do s is just zero vertical displacement is zero so zero this is equal to ut this is u sine theta into t minus half gt square that is because a y is minus g when we work this out we can take t common in this in this expression and that gives us u sine theta minus half g t and that is equal to zero so two solutions will come out from this this equation one would be that t is equal to zero and the other would be t being equal to 2u sine theta divided by g now t equals to zero it really it really tells us tells us the position of the bullet when it was just fired from this point that is t equals to zero t equals to 2u sine theta by g really tells us the time when the bullet is bullet bullet is at this position at this position right here now we can try and describe this motion more we can we can we can talk about we can talk about the horizontal displacement and we call this range this is called this is called range so this is the second thing that we are talking about range is the horizontal displacement and when we talk about horizontal displacement i'm sure you'll agree that we only need to look at the x part of the motion because horizontal displacement is only dependent on how how long or short the blue vector is it does not really depend on u sine theta you can have u sine theta extremely large or extremely small it still won't play any role on how much the bullet moved in the x direction in the horizontal direction and usually we ignore air resistance so there is no acceleration so to figure out displacement we know that speed is equal to distance upon time so, and velocity is displacement upon time so displacement range that is equal to velocity which is u cos theta into into time and we already calculated time we already calculated time over here so we can really place this over here and when we do that this becomes equal to 2u square sin theta into cos theta divided by g this is your horizontal displacement and we only looked at x to be able to figure this out but we also needed to know what time was right and for time we looked at we looked at the vertical we looked at the vertical motion so now one more thing remains to be able to fully describe the projectile motion that is the maximum height that is this maximum height now at the maximum height at maximum at this point at this point right here there is no vertical velocity there is only only a horizontal velocity and the component that influences maximum height is only the vertical component it depends how long or short this vector is that will only tell us how high or how low the projectile goes horizontal component only determines the horizontal displacement not the vertical displacement vertical displacement is the uh, is u sin theta's effect so so at the highest point there is no vertical velocity there is no vertical component of velocity so now if we try and think about which equation can we use to figure out let's call this h to figure out h let's let's think about it we know the we know the initial vertical velocity and we know acceleration we know acceleration we know this and we also know the final vertical velocity so this really this really is this is i u y f and by final i mean the velocity at the highest point this is zero so now this equation really makes sense because we know v u and we know a we need to figure out s so when we do that when we do that this is v square the final vertical component of velocity at this point at the highest point this is zero this is zero u square would be u square sine square theta and a is minus g so when we take u square to the left hand side that becomes u square sine square theta let me just add the minus sign also so and this is equal to minus 2 g h minus gets cancelled off and h becomes equal to u square sine square theta divided by 2 g and this is the third thing this is the maximum height so to be able to describe a projectile motion all we need to know is the velocity with which the object was fired and the angle at which it was fired we can then tell the time maximum height and the horizontal displacement or the range 
and to be able to tell maximum height we only looked at the vertical part of the motion to be able to tell the horizontal displacement the range we only looked at the horizontal part of the motion and to figure out time we again looked at the vertical the vertical part of the motion now let's go back to the question that we asked in the beginning of this video all right so between these two bullets the question is which bullet will hit the ground first and and this brown bullet is being shot horizontally it's totally horizontal so when it is shot there is no vertical component to the velocity there is just horizontal component and the vertical component builds because of gravity and the red bullet is just dropped at this point there is only a vertical component there is no horizontal component to this velocity now why don't you pause the video and maybe try to think which bullet will hit the ground first okay let's try and change the question a little so what will you say what will you say if the gun was angled at this point and the bullet was fired and at that instant a second bullet was dropped vertically in that case which bullet do you think will hit the ground first the one that was fired at an angle or the one that was just dropped at that very instant i think you might have guessed it right the one that was dropped at that very instant right why don't you why don't you take a guess at this point now when a bullet is dropped at this point and when a bullet is fired which one will hit the ground first here you might say the other bullet the brown bullet this bullet will hit the ground first the brown bullet okay what about what about in this case it is angled slightly like this so the bullet goes somewhat like this the brown bullet goes like this and the other bullet is just dropped at that very instant now again you might say the red bullet will will reach the ground first and now if i tilt it slightly like this now you might say the brown bullet will hit the ground first so there comes a point there comes a point when both of these bullets they hit the ground at the same time and that is when the bullet is fired horizontally the bullet that is fired horizontally and the bullet that is dropped they reach the ground at the same time let's try to confirm that mathematically so this height we can call that we can call that h and let's try to figure out the time that both of them take to reach the ground so for the red one for the red one initial velocity that is zero then it gains some velocity because of acceleration due to gravity and the time that it takes we can use a kinematic equation which is s is equals to half a t square and over here s is h this h this is equal to we could have written u t but initial initial velocity is zero it has just been dropped so initial velocity this is zero so h this is equal to half g t square and t is really the under root of this is 2h divided by g and now if you look at the brown bullet if you look at the brown bullet here if you look at only the y part of the journey initially there is no velocity at this point there is some at this point there is more at this point there is even more at this point even more so the vertical motion of this bullet is just like the vertical motion of this bullet even for this bullet velocity is increasing increases some more some more some more and then more now if we try to figure out the time that the brown bullet takes to reach the ground we only really need to just look at the y component initial velocity initial vertical velocity is zero so just like this it's zero and it falls to the same height so h is again equal to half at square plus ut ut this is zero because there is no vertical component of velocity when it is just fired horizontally there is only a horizontal component so now again t this is equal to under root of 2h divided by g in place of a we can write g so these two bullets they reach the ground at the same time mainly because they both start with zero vertical velocity their their vertical velocity increases because of the same acceleration that is g and they fall through the same height that is h so they reach the ground at the same time it doesn't matter how fast you fire it really because the vertical velocity will still be zero when it is shot at a greater speed horizontally it will it will still be zero and the time that it takes to reach the ground the time that, that it takes to cover this height h is only dependent on the vertical velocity we are not looking anything horizontal we are only looking at the we are only looking at how much time it takes for the bullet to complete this distance h that is only dependent on the vertical component vertical distance dependent on vertical component and that starts from zero increases because of g just like the red bullet so which bullet will hit the ground first both reach the ground at the same time 